beautiful people. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today I am here with a very special guest. This is my good friend Gethin Jones. He's been staying with us for the week. And today I have roped him into creating a tin whistle video just for you. <laughs> How are you feeling about it? Well, I've been nervous, but... <laughs> today we're going to show you guys some tips and tricks for your at-home learning so you can improve the way you learn tin whistle tunes from home. And hopefully that means that if you don't have a tutor or you just don't want to fork out the extra cash, you guys can learn for free on my channel, hopefully, and improve the way you do things. <laughs> So the first thing to do if you're learning a tune is to make sure you're warmed up on your whistle. Now you warm up your whistle by covering the blade at the top and blowing into the whistle. This warm air just brings your whistle up to room temperature and gives you the best chances of playing the correct notes. Now one of the warm-up exercises that's most important, especially if you're playing a new whistle like Gethin is here, is to get used to the amount of air that you need to hit the low notes and the high notes. So we do something called octave jumps. So this means we play the low octave and then the high octave for every note going up the scale. And we try and work out how much air we need to hit those notes. So Gethin's going to give you a demonstration. <laughs> no pressure. for here is to play the low note on the first breath and the high note on the second breath and what we want to do is try and get that as clean as we can going up the whistle because that'll get us used to how much air we need for each octave once we've done octave jumps again you can do some scales just to get you used to going up and down your whistle so if we do the lower octave it would sound something like this And that would be your scale and then you'd go back down from that high D and good practice with this is to try and keep the notes the same length as you're going up and down the octave um, just to give yourself a little bit of timing so you don't want to be holding one note for any longer than any of the other notes one of the main things you'll need to do if you're learning to play a tune is know how that tune goes. And if you can hum or if you can sing a particular tune in your head or out loud, then you can definitely play that on any instrument that you grab. So we're playing Wild Mountain Time today, so we need an idea of how that sounds. So as Gethin is going to be playing, Gethin's going to give us a quick hum to see if he can do it. Perfect. So if you can hum those individual phrases of that tune in your head, it's cemented in your brain and you guys are going to be flying when it comes to learning to play it. One of the key tips that is something you can work towards is if you're struggling in a particular tune, you might notice that the tabs are grouped into little phrases. And phrases is the word that is key here. Now, partly when you're singing a song, especially if you're singing Wild Mountain Time, or uh, a demonstration I usually offer is happy birthday. You sing a phrase of that song and then there's a pause. So in happy birthday, you've got happy birthday to you. You end the sentence and there's a slight pause in the song. So when you get to that moment, if you think along the same lines within your tune, work in phrases as you go. So you can see on screen now we've got um, a selection of grouped notes for Wild Mountain Time. So the first group is G, E, D, 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 E, G. So if you're ever new to a tune or you're working through a tune and you're stuck for sections to choose, choose those individual phrases within the tune, where those lyrics would be, and try and work on individual phrases. So to start with, we'll play the first group phrase on Wild Mountain Time. So that's our first phrase. Now, once you've nailed that phrase, like Gethin just has, it's time to move on to the second phrase. And then once you've done that second phrase, you can group those two together. So it's piece by piece, kind of like a puzzle, putting the tune together. So do you want to go to the yeah, second yeah. phrase? Perfect. So once we've gathered those two together, we can run them first phrase to second phrase, and it should sound something like this. That 
that's how to group phrases and how to piece your music together bit by bit. Now, if there are any parts of the tune in particular that you struggle with, and Gethin's pretty much got this one down, so he's good with this, but if you get halfway through the tune and you find you always stop at one particular section, it's good to rerun that section right at the start of your practice so that you kind of get over the fear of going wrong at that point. What tends to happen is we'll play through a tune until we make a mistake, and then we'll start again because we've messed it up. And if we do that, what tends to happen is you repeat the first section over and over, and that's a section you can already play. So playing that over and over again and then stopping every time you hit that difficult part just means that you never practice the difficult bit. So for example, if you look at the end two phrases that we have on screen at the moment, these two phrases um, are probably one of the bits that can be a little bit more complicated in this particular tune. So if Gethin was having trouble with these two last little phrases, the best tip would be to start with those phrases and then once you've nailed those phrases, go back and play from the beginning. Hopefully then, as you're playing throughout the tune, you'll get to those little bits and you already know them in your head and you can breeze through and carry on with the rest of your song. Now, when you're learning a tune, obviously the best way to start is to start really slowly and then speed up once you can play that tune all the way through at that speed. Now, if you're using a metronome, which is quite a difficult thing to do, it's a really good way of speeding yourself up with a tune. Now, Wild Mountain Time is quite a slow tune anyway. It doesn't need to have its speed increased. But what we're going to try to do today is play at 60 beats per minute, and that's faster than Gethin usually plays. So once you've hit that speed with your playing, then um, what you can do is increase the metronome speed a little bit and see if you can hum along with that. So let's see if we can get in time with this 60 beats per minute. So this is 10 more than we usually play. So we'd be looking at that's quite a lot quicker than we've played so maybe just start with the first two okay. phrases and see if we can get that in time That was lovely. Just get in it at the end of that yeah. then, it was great. Yeah. One thing you can do is challenge yourself to try and speed tunes up a bit, especially if you're playing those fast Irish tunes. Um, yeah, start slower, follow along with a metronome to get your pacing for it, and then speed up by sort of 10 beats per minute, even five if you find that easier, but 10 beats per minute jumps as you go. And especially if you do that throughout your practice, what that'll do is it'll already be in your brain, it'll become muscle memory on your whistle. So you won't need to look at the tabs so much, your fingers hopefully will start to learn what they're doing, <laughs> and hopefully it'll help improve your speed and your confidence, I guess, with the tune as well. Now, one thing we haven't done today, um, but I do recommend you guys do, is print out the tabs that are shown in all my videos. And you can do this by clicking on the link in the description down below, that will take you to JPEG versions of all of my tabs and you can print those from any device and also hopefully display them on any device as well. But if you do manage to print your tabs, what you can do is you can make notes on the actual printed page. So um, in, for example, Wild Mountain Time, again, I'll put up on screen. You can see um, that in the very first phrase, we've got G-E-D-D-D-E-G. -D -D -E and that first D of the little group of three is actually held longer than the other two Ds. So what we could do is put a little two on top just to know that we hold it, say, for example, twice as long as the notes around it. Or if you had a little group of notes together, um, one I often demonstrate is in Concerning Hobbits, which you guys can see on screen now. The first three notes are a little run together, and I usually draw a little loop or a little um, line across these notes so that I know when I go to play that these notes are grouped together quite quickly and you run up those on the whistle. So whether you're adding ornaments or whether you're struggling with the length of certain notes or you need to remind yourself that this section you need to blow harder or go a little bit quicker or you want to throw something in, a slide, whatever you like, make those notes on your printout and then hopefully next time you come to play that will help you remember 
what you need to do at certain points. Obviously, tabs are a replacement for sheet music. Sheet music gives you all this information that tabs don't. So it's half learning by ear, making sure that you know how to hum the tune, and also giving yourself that extra little tip and hint just by adding notes to your page. And finally, our last tip of the day is to, once you've finished your practice and you've played the song throughout, even if you've managed to speed it up to quite a high pace, but you didn't get it quite right, is to play through really slowly right at the end and solidify that perfect playthrough in your mind because your brain will repeat whatever it was that you played last. So to finish off, we're going to play Wild Mountain Time nice and slow. We're going to try and follow Gethin. <laughs> today. Thank you very much, Gethin, for being my <laughs> special guest. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that big thumbs up button. Subscribe. Leave me a comment down below to let us know what you thought. And uh, yeah, check out some other videos that will now cover our faces on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week. I will see you guys very soon for more Tin Whistle Tunes. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. We did yeah. it. How do you feel about having That's played good. live yes, on good. YouTube <laughs> before you're even on there? <laughs> That's good. Uh, that. There we go. Yeah.